Hey everyone, it's Tracy at Whirls and Swirls Quilting and today I'm going to show you what I think is the fastest, easiest way to load your layers on your quilting frame so that you can spend less time doing that and more time quilting. All right, today we're gonna to get this little quilt loaded onto the quilting frame. There are several methods or ways that this can be accomplished. I've tried them all over the years, and for me personally, I much prefer the dowel clamping system over any of the other methods. The one thing you are going to need if you're going to use this method is casings in your leaders, because the dowel has to go in. Now, most machines don't come with casings already in their leaders, so you will have to do that. Don't worry about it. I'm going to give you a link to go and watch my how to sew the casings in the leaders video, and you can accomplish that right on the frame using your long arm. No need to take them off. Um, the, put them on your domestic machine and struggle with all that canvas. Leave them on the frame and use your machine to stitch them on. It's super easy, and if you watch that video, that'll teach you how to do that. All right, before we get started, just a quick word about the requirements for your batting and for your backing when it comes to quilting on a long arm frame. For those of you who are new to long arm quilting, you are going to need more backing fabric than what you're used to. The general rule of thumb is four inches longer and wider. However, I find because I use the clamping system, it takes up a little bit more backing fabric than pins or leaders do. So you are going to need just a little bit extra. My rule of thumb is 10 inches longer and wider. So if your quilt is 80 by 100, you're gonna need 90 by 110. If it's 60 by 70, you're gonna need 70 by 80. It does not matter if it's pieced, it does not matter if it's wide back, you just need that extra space, okay? So as long as you've got that, you're gonna be good to go. The first thing you need to do is make sure that your leaders are in the correct position before you get your backing fabric on there. So I've got my belly bar or my backing bar leader underneath. It comes under, over top of the quilt top roller and sits on the top like that so that the dowel is actually sitting on the top. I also have the locking gauge so that this isn't gonna shift on me when I put my uh, clamps on. The pickup roller has the leader coming underneath the leveler bar and then up and back over the top. This is really important. If you put your backing fabric, attach your backing fabric to that back leader and this leader's not underneath the leveler bar, you're gonna end up with a ski hill. So be sure that that leader is let out enough that it can come under the leveler bar, up and over the top, and it'll hang on the other side for now, okay? So we're ready to go. I'm gonna get my backing fabric. I'm using a wide backing today, so I'm gonna actually load selvage to selvage. This is longer than the required 10 inches, but I'm not worried about it. I'll just throw it on there. So I stand myself in the middle of my frame, ish. And you're gonna flop it over. Here we go. And we're gonna position the selvage edge of the backing right on top. The goal when we load the backing is to use as little of it as possible when we're actually clamping it down. So what I don't want to see is you've got inches and inches hanging over this roller. Get as little as possible on there. So I just use the selvage and I lay that on top of my dowel. And with my clamps, I'm gonna clamp down the fabric. The easiest way, rather than trying to position it like this and push with your fingers, it's gonna make it wobbly, I position that on a, I don't know, whatever angle that is, about 60 degrees or something. And I put my heel of my hand onto the clamp and I squeeze the roller and push down with the heel of my hand. The next one's going to go on there and you want them just to touch or be no more than about your baby finger apart. We need it to be solid. And then here, I've only got about this much backing and my, my clamp is quite a bit longer, but it doesn't matter. You can clamp just plain canvas and you're good. That's it. 
You can actually load a queen king size quilt and be ready to quilt in 15, 20 minutes. And that's including setting up the pantograph. Now I'm gonna drop this leader down into the middle, undo my lock, and I'm gonna wind it onto my belly bar. So as you can see, this is why I throw it over the back. As I'm winding the backing on, because it's sort of getting that resistance from the canvas that's up here, it's winding it on really nice. If you've got your backing fabric just dropped down there and it's all puddled, when you try to wind it onto here, it's gonna be really saggy and sloppy and soggy. So as I wind it on, every now and then I'm just making sure that I keep it smooth and I just cut my hands and I go from the center out, from the center out. And I'm gonna keep winding every now and then, center out, center out, and I'm watching under here, and as soon as I see that my backing disappears, center out, center out. This is also a really good opportunity to see if you've got any fluff or fuzz, cat hair, dog hair, anything that you might find on your backing. Extra threads, there's a thread. There you go, it gives you the opportunity to look at it as well and to pick anything off that you may need to. So now that my backing fabric has disappeared and I can't see it under there, I know that I'm almost at the top of the other side of the fabric. So I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna go around to the other side and we'll load it onto the pickup roller. Now we're gonna attach it to the leader on the pickup roller. Before we do that, we need to do a couple of things. I'm gonna let this out. Again, we only wanna use as little as possible, but we also need to make sure that this is nice and straight and it's laying correctly. So I'm going to shift it a little bit to make sure that both sides are sitting evenly and that there's no bend or waffle in the middle of the fabric. So I'm gonna show you what that may look like. What we don't want is for one side to be higher than the other or can you see that waffle in the, hopefully you can see that waffle in the camera. We don't want any of that either, all right? So we're gonna even it all out, lay it down, make sure it's nice and even. And that may mean that this selvage edge is not perfectly straight on the leader. This doesn't matter, that's what matters, okay? Again, with the clamps, I'm gonna position it just on a bit of an angle. I'm gonna use the heel of my hand again, and I'm gonna squeeze the pickup roller underneath it, and it pops it right on. Next one, making sure that they're side by side. And then the last one. There, let's flatten it out. All right, so I've got my lock off and I'm going to advance the leader down as it falls off. Then I start to wind it back this way. And I'm gonna position that so that the clamps are sitting just in front of the leveler bar. See how nice and flat that is? It's perfect, that's what you're looking for. We're not gonna leave it this tight when we quilt, but I just wanted to show you that it's nice and flat, okay? Next, we need the batting and the quilt top. Now, my batting is about the same width as my backing fabric, maybe an inch narrower, that's fine. Just make sure that your batting's not wider than the backing, because then it's gonna hang over and then you run the risk of it getting caught in the carriage as the machine is going underneath around there. So when I lay my, back, uh, my backing down, or my batting, sorry, I wanna make sure that I leave a little bit of space at the top. I've got this laid right over top of the quilt top roller. It's gonna stay there just for a minute. So you want a few inches at the top. Don't worry about a measurement. Just make sure you leave some space. And then we're gonna plop our quilt top right on top of that. Now, the method that I'm showing you when it comes to the quilt top, this is called floating, 
I don't actually use my quilt top roller for my quilt top. I do use it, and I'll show you that in a minute. Um, but I, I use the floating method. That's what I prefer. So I'm going to lay that little quilt top. Make sure you get it sort of centered on your, back, on your backing, so you've got about the same amount on either side. Again, don't get too worried about it being perfect, perfectly centered, unless, of course, your backing is pieced, and that's a whole other tutorial. Right now, I've got a solid backing. It doesn't matter. Um, it, I don't have to line anything up. So, just so you can see me do that, I'm going to take my batting and my quilt top and I'm going to roll them up together over top of the quilt top roller and then I'm going to tuck them under and send them back. And then when you roll it back, you're going to end up closer. You're going to end up closer to those clamps. Now you want to make sure you've got at least an inch and a half, maybe two inches from this clamp because we don't want to run the risk of having the machine hit into that. So this is one of the reasons why I say that we need the five inches longer at the top and at the bottom rather than the four. You do need that little extra space. So if I look at my backing fabric here, I've already used about that much of it and just to get to the quilt top, okay? So smooth it all out. And by eye, I'm trying to get it as straight as I can get it but I am going to use the machine to make sure that that's straight before I do anything else, before I baste, start quilting, anything. Okay? So that's it. And then the quilt top and the batting just hang down like that onto the floor. So the next thing we need to do is make sure that our quilt top is straight and get our basting done. Just a couple more things to do before we get to the quilting. The first thing we need to do, and this is extremely important, I cannot stress this enough, you need to make sure that your quilt is loaded straight onto the frame. Right now, this little quilt looks by eye that it's straight, but I'm going to use my channel locks to make sure. The way I do it, and I prefer this method, is I use my channel lock and my hopping foot, and I use an pieced seam inside the quilt, whether it be the border seam for the outer border or an inner border seam. If there are no borders, then you can always use a seam that goes across the inside of the quilt or the length, depending on how you have it uh, loaded. This is a much more reliable measurement than the outside edge of the quilt. Generally, the most wonky part of a quilt will be the very outside edge of, on the border. So I don't want to take the chance that I line up my entire quilt to what that outside line says, okay? So I'm gonna put my channel lock on. I've got my foot right on the front edge of my seam line, and I'm just gonna push it across, and I'm making sure that the front of that foot is sitting right on that seam line the entire way. If I need to adjust it a little bit, I can either sort of tickle it down or push it up a little bit to make sure that it's not on any kind of angle. Now right there, it's just a little bit low. So I'm just gonna sort of do that because it's not that far off. There, and that looks really good. That looks nice and straight to me. The other thing you wanna make sure when you're doing this, um, don't lean on your belly bar. Sometimes people will, ha will they'll want to lean. And what that does is it pushes everything forward a little bit. So while it looks straight there, if I lean on it, it goes in a little bit and then I'm going to be adjusting. So make sure you stay off that belly bar when you're doing this process. There we go. Beautiful. Perfect and straight. Now we're ready to baste. Now that we know the quilt is perfectly straight horizontally, we need to have a method to make sure that it stays straight vertically. 
all right? That's where the quilt top roller comes in handy. Because I float my quilt tops, so it's just hanging here, it's not attached to anything, I need to have something to tell me that as I'm advancing the quilt up throughout the quilting process, that the quilt isn't drifting to the left or to the right. So I'm going to use my quilt top roller and my C clamps. These are just little white clamps. They fit the rollers perfectly and they do fit any machine, not just APQS machines. And I'm going to position them on this little quilt. I'm going to position them in line with the border seams. So I'm going to place this over top of my roller and I have it lined up. The center of this is sitting right on that seam line. And then I'll do one on this side as well. Again, I'm not using the outside edges of the quilt. I'm using pieced seams that run the length of the quilt. That's going to be your most reliable. If this was a large quilt, I would probably have at least three, maybe four. If there's a center seam that comes all the way down the quilt, I would absolutely put one there. This quilt's pretty small, so just two is fine. But this is going to allow me, every time I advance my quilt up and I smooth everything out before I baste each side to go ahead and do the quilting, I'm going to make sure that these C clamps are in line, or I should rather the quilt is in line with those C clamps all the way to the bottom. And that ensures that nothing's drifting. Let's baste. I want to take a quick second to talk about basting. Basting is extremely important. It's a step that you must not skip and you want to always have the outside edges of your quiltable space basted before you get into quilting. Whether you're free motioning from the front or you're using a pantograph and a laser light on the back of the machine or if you've got a computer doing it for you, those outside edges absolutely have to be tacked down before you quilt in them. Okay, a couple of things about basting. The first thing is, I get asked this a lot, I don't change my stitch length to baste the outside edges of my quilt. The last thing you want to do is change the stitch length on your machine and baste your quilt and perhaps get distracted and then quilt a row or two of your pantograph at your basting stitch length. Ask me how I know. It was many, many years ago, but I never did it again. So I always baste with the same stitch length that I'm quilting with. And I also want you to stay within an eighth of an inch of the edge. That's what you're shooting for. If you baste too far in on the quilt, a couple things can happen. First thing is you may see it outside the binding and nobody wants to see basting stitches outside the binding. It's ugly. And the other reason is as you're coming off the quilt and coming back on, especially with a pantograph or a computer. I mean, when you're free motion quilting, you're at the front and you can see it. But if the computer's doing it or you're standing back there, as you come off the quilt and come back on, if you've basted it too far in, the foot can actually flip the fabric over and then you're gonna have your fabric flipped over on the edge of your border and that can cause problems too and you may see it outside your binding as well. So I want you to stay as close as you can to the edge and it'll be fine. It doesn't matter if it's a little bit wobbly or if it's not pretty, it will get tucked inside the binding later and you'll never see it. All right, here we go. So I'm going to drop my needle down, bring my needle up, you know, Push my machine away and pull up my bobbin thread. And I like to start in the down position and I'm going to baste up the back, up to the back. I'm staying super close to the edge. If you happen to fall off the edge, just swing back around, get back on it and up, okay? We're gonna come across the top. Now, as I go across the top, I actually push my fingers down a little bit right here. And what that's doing, it's not stretching or anything, it's just helping the fabric stay straight. 
and it helps it feed in underneath the foot. So I just walk my fingers along. Get to the top and then we're gonna come down this way. Again, stay as close as you can to the edge. If you fall off like that, just swing yourself back around. Get back on it. There. So now I'm as close as I can get. Now I know that as I come off and back on that quilt, I'm right on the very edge and nothing's gonna flip over and I'm never gonna be able to see that basting outside my binding line. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope what I had to teach you here today was helpful and if anyone's having any trouble at all with pantographs, setting them up, working through them, or how to advance, make sure you check out my video pantographs the easy way. I will post the link to that in the description below and you can go and check that out and I'll show you how I work through a quilt using a pantograph. All right, take care and we'll see you soon.